Hi, I'm Lucy Reed. I'm a family barrister and mediator, and I've made this video for people who are going through a family court case but who don't have a lawyer to explain things to them. The video is mainly prepared for parents involved in disputes about their children, but should also be helpful if you're involved in another kind of family court case, for example, about your finances after separation. As a family barrister, I'm in court most days dealing with this kind of case. And I know that coming to court, particularly when you don't have a lawyer, and particularly for the first time, can be a very stressful and confusing experience. I remember the nerves I had when I first started as a lawyer and had to speak in court, and I have first-hand experience of the stress involved in representing myself. I meet litigants in person every day who are finding things very stressful, and I'd like to help make it a bit easier. Of course, this video isn't legal advice, but I hope it will be helpful. Although you'll probably still be nervous about what will happen with your case, it might help a little if I talk through some of the practical stuff so you have less to worry about and can focus upon saying what you want to say to the judge. In this video, I'm going to focus on preparing for your first court hearing. Some of the things I'm going to talk about might seem obvious to you, but they are things that often catch people out and which can distract them from the really important stuff. I'm going to show you around my local court in Bristol so you can get a feel for what it might be like in yours. Obviously, not all courts are the same, and luckily for me, Bristol Civil Justice Centre is a new court building which is quite well equipped, but it should give you a rough idea. Unfortunately, some courts are not purpose-built, so it can be difficult to find a private space to sit in and the facilities can be variable. Make sure that you know where the court is before the day of the hearing. People often make the mistake of going to the magistrates or the Crown Court because they recognise it from the news. The family court may be within the same building as either the magistrates' court, the Crown Court or the county court. You need to check. In Bristol, the Civil Justice Centre combines a number of different courts but is separate from the Crown Court. Check the address on the court order, because some courts use more than one location, and so the venue can change from one hearing to the next. If you come by taxi, the driver will need to know which court you're heading to. If you aren't specific, they may drop you at the wrong one. The Justice website, that's www.justice.gov.uk, has a court finder on the homepage. You can find a map of the court using this tool and find out if the court has parking. You can also check what disabled facilities the court has, like ramps and hearing loops. Not all courts have dedicated parking and some are difficult to get to using public transport, so do make a plan before the morning of the hearing. Leave plenty of time to allow for traffic, delayed buses or trains, or just for getting lost. Better to arrive early and calm than late and hot and bothered. I always work out which train I need to catch to arrive on time, and then I catch the one before that. It means I usually get to stroll to court rather than arrive in a fluster, so I'm in a better frame of mind to start the hearing. If you're driving, bring plenty of change with you, enough to park all day just in case. If the court is in an unfamiliar part of town, you can always visit the court before the court hearing. It's open to the public so you can familiarise yourself with the building in advance and may even be able to sit in on certain types of court hearings although you should check with court staff before going into a hearing room, as family cases are usually in private. It's a good idea to arrive at court at least half an hour before the hearing is due to start. In fact, the court order will probably tell you to do this anyway. This is so that you can make sure you're ready and discuss things with the other person involved in the case or their lawyer, and sometimes to give you a chance to speak to the CAFCAS officer. I talk a bit more about CAFCAS in the next video, but you can find out about them on their website which is www.cafcas.gov.uk. That's C-A-F-C-A-S-S dot gov, G-O-V dot U-K. You'll need to go through security to get into court. We're not allowed to film the security process, but usually you'll need to empty your bag, allow your pockets to be searched, and go through a security arch, a bit like security at the airport. Some courts will confiscate anything sharp or that they think might be capable of being used as a weapon. This is standard practice. It's a good idea to put your coins in a purse and your bits and bobs in a bag so that you don't have to spend ages getting through security. I find that there are a few really useful items to have in my bag when I come to court. I always have several spare pens, a highlighter and some post-it notes, a bottle of water, a packet of tissues, my phone and some change. If you get flaky mid-morning, like I do, then you may want to bring a snack or a banana with you. 
Remember to bring your court papers, and if there isn't a bundle with an index, try and put them in some kind of sensible order in a file so you can find the right document when you need it. Once you're inside the building, you need to find a court list or a member of court staff to point you in the right direction. There may be different waiting areas for different types of cases. The court lists for family cases often don't show the names of the parties, so make sure you bring your case number with you so you can find out which courtroom your case is being heard in. The most recent court order will have the case number, the date and time of the hearing and the court address on it. The court usher will often but not always be dressed in a black gown or there may be a counter that you can ask at. If you're unsure, find somebody wearing a suit as they're probably a lawyer and can point you in the right direction. If you're planning to show documents to the judge that other people in the case haven't seen, you should bring copies for the judge and the other people involved in the case and hand them in to the court usher when you arrive. Everybody is entitled to see everything that the judge sees. Once you've signed in, you'll be asked to wait until your case is called. You may find that your case takes a while to be called because several cases will be listed at the same time slot. In some courts, you'll be able to use a private room, but if it's busy, you may have to wait in the main waiting area. If you're intimidated by the other person involved in the case, ask the court staff. They may be able to find somewhere more private for you to wait. Whilst waiting, you may be approached by a lawyer representing the other person in the case. Don't be concerned about this. The judge will expect you to have a chat with them to see if you can agree on any areas and to identify what the likely areas of dispute are. You don't have to agree anything with them if you don't feel comfortable, but by having a chat with the lawyer for the other person and listening to what they have to say, you will probably have a better understanding of what they're going to ask the judge to do when you do go into court, and you'll have a few minutes to think it through before the hearing starts, rather than being surprised when you go in. I'll talk a bit more about why this can be helpful in the next video. The court order might say that your case is listed for a particular type of hearing and might give you a time estimate. Cases often overrun though, so do make sure that you make arrangements for childcare and parking and time off work on the basis that you might be stuck at court for the whole day, even if the time estimate on the court order is much less. That way you won't be worrying about parking tickets and school runs and can just focus on the hearing. If you have special dietary requirements, bring a snack with you. Some courts have a cafe, others have a snack machine and some have neither and not every court is within easy reach of a sandwich shop. If you do have to get away by a certain time, make sure to tell the court staff and the others involved in the case at the first opportunity and ask for the judge to be made aware. They may be able to try and prioritise your case. Don't bring the kids to court with you unless the court has asked you to do so. You will almost certainly not be able to bring them into court unless it's a very small baby and there's no alternative. Family cases aren't open to the public and although the press are allowed into the hearing, they rarely come and can be excluded if appropriate. If you've brought a friend with you to court, they may be able to come into the hearing and sit quietly and support you, but not speak on your behalf. Someone who does this is called a Mackenzie friend. You should tell the usher when you arrive that you have a friend that you'd like to bring into court with you, and you may have to ask the judge to approve this before the hearing begins. As long as your friend is sensible and doesn't disrupt the hearing, they will usually be allowed in. You must be sure that your friend understands that all the court documents and everything that's said in court are confidential and mustn't be passed on to anyone else. Some judges will ask your friend to provide a short CV or fill in a simple application form. It follows that if your ex wants to have a Mackenzie friend with them in court, they will probably be allowed as well, unless there's a good reason. If you object, you must say so. Tell the usher before you go into court or tell the judge at the start of the hearing. It's generally better not to bring your new partner or someone who's taken sides in the split with you to act as your Mackenzie friend. It will make the atmosphere more difficult and they may not be permitted to come into court, which would leave you on your own. This is an argument that's really best to avoid. Some courts have local organisations that provide support, advice or representation for free. The court staff or your local citizens' advice bureau may be able to give you more information about services or schemes in your court or area. There are also national organisations like the Bar Pro Bono Unit that might be able to find you representation, but unfortunately there are no guarantees they can help. Look out for leaflets around the court. In the next video I'm going to tell you a bit more about the hearing itself and I'm going to show you what a courtroom looks like. 
In order to make this film, we've had to get special permission from the court service, and we're not allowed to film people involved in real cases. You should never record your court case unless the judge has given you permission. In these videos, we've used our volunteers to show a scenario involving a male litigant in person and his Mackenzie friend, and a female litigant and her lawyer. Of course, in your case, it may be the other way around. There may be no lawyers at all, or you may both have a Mackenzie friend.